Good afternoon, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2000. I better stretch out here. 2019 Bowman Baseball 12 box. Pick your team number four from jazbeescasebreaks.com. We've actually been pulling some really nice stuff out of here, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully we can keep that trend going. Here on Thursday, the 19th, 4 19 19, we've got 12 box hobby. Pick your team four right there. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, it's in, it's in a separate tab. There's so many of them. <clears throat> So everybody who has like a little rooftop next to their names, that means you got those in a spot random. So congrats to Tony, Anthony, Josh, and Jason. Got some nice teams there. Should be at the top of the site. Yeah, Jesse, if you go to the – oh, maybe it's not in the football. I think it might be in a, in a different – like a, its own special flawless tab. If you look at uh, just the homepage, jaspiescasebreaks.com, you you should see everything. It's on the top of the screen too. <laughs> All right, so you see the camera above my head. Nick Jaspi should be able to help us with not only pick your team four, but five. For this, for this one. You're saying over under at 54 minutes? Is 55 and change. I think we can go. All right. 50. This is actually less cards than the jump on. It's just more packs. Right. So I feel like it just evens out. I feel like it's like the same time. All right. Although if you do it by yourself, the hobby's a lot. It is. All right, so you see Nick Jaspi's camera above my head. So you can see all the uh, pack stacking that will be going on. One autograph per box. So we'll be keeping track of all that. We'll see uh, 12 autographs by the end. Unless we get a unless we get a bonus. I think it's kind of rare, but unless we get a bonus. You missed again. Man. It's a weird angle. <laughs> it is a weird angle. It'd be like shooting from behind the, the back. Behind the backboard? Yeah. All right, so this is Hobby, Pick Your Team 4, boys and girls. Coming up right after this will be Hobby, Pick Your Team 5. Right after that, Jumbo, Pick Your Team 5. Right after that, Status Basketball. And you know what? That will bring us to about the last hour of the broadcast or so, last hour or so of the broadcast, give or take 15 minutes or so. So let me know if something else fills out, fills up. We, would, we do have time for either a hobby or a jumbo. One more at the end of the night. So get into all of that on jazbeescasebreaks.com if you're watching live. Everything else, like let's say a Bowman jumbo fills, uh, that, that will be the last break of the night. And then every, anything else that fills, uh, fills up will be breaking tomorrow. I know, right? Hey, but I can't I can't stop the people from what they want, Darren Porter. It's a palate cleanse. It's, it'll be a nice palate cleanse. I don't mind the status actually. It's a good break. Hobby box number one, pick your team four. Good luck, everybody. So we'll be obviously breezing through the paper, which doesn't ship. Obviously, inserts like that will ship. And it's one auto per box. And we'll try to keep each stack per box just so we can keep track. But it's only 12 autographs, so we'll be able to keep track pretty easily. 102 out of 250. Purple Chrome for the Purple Mountains. That goes to Michael Smith with the Rockies. Hmm. Interesting. It's like Sean Marion shooting. You gotta get used yeah. to it. So, just real quick. So we have these top loaders that are stacked right here. Nick Jaspi has the mouth of the top loaders left, right? I keep the mouth of the top loaders right. That's just a wild move. Which I then Should grab the top loader to do this, but I guess Nick Jaspi likes to do that. I'd put you in prison. But... Uh, man, I don't know. I gotta turn it around. That's that's just not used to it. The mouth has to go on the I'd right. Be like a dispenser coming out backwards. It's just totally <laughs> backwards. <laughs> I get. I guess if like a blackjack shoe, the mouth is left, right? If anything, the, it's, our t the top loader should be on the left, and then we can just we're both righties, right? Yeah. We could just go like this. Yeah, I don't know. Or like a toddler's just pop out right here and just That'd go. Awesome. <laughs> or you just put like, you spray liquid on it and it. Oh, blows. man. 
liquid top loader. That would be sick. Just be like. Tsss. I just invented the next million dollar idea. You got to do it before someone steals it. Liquid top loader. Darren Porter that might steal just it. Genius. Just completely safe. It's I not mean, gonna wig. Sh that's Shark Tank. It's not gonna wiggle around. It's because just you could sell it to Magic the Gathering, Pokemon. Oh man. Yu-Gi-Oh. Just be like, oh, here's Victor, Victor Mace, or Victor Mesa Jr. Yeah, you put right? it in Atomic. Sleeve. You put it in a put sleeve. Put in the sleeve. And then, or you even have a sleeve. Right? These are one per hobby box. And be like, yeah. instant then, top loader. Or you have one where it does the sleeve and the top loader. Oh, man. And you charge double. That's insane. That's I'm where into, the real money is. I'm into it. Sick yeah, the, the winners in the double. hobby. The winners in the hobby is like Ultra Pro. Top loaders. It's yeah. Ultra Pro, yeah. They're not breaking Bowman. Yeah. For an hour and a half. You, would you rather? Would you rather own a? Would you rather own like GM or would you rather own Firestone tires? <laughs> <laughs> like everyone has to use tires. I'd rather own yeah Firestone tires. Absolutely. All right, so we already saw the autograph out of here, that our first autograph out of this box. So we're just gonna see if there's any. Maybe parallels. Remember, orange is uh, exclusive to the hobby edition, so we can look out for those as well. There it is. There's Daz Cameron at a 25 orange chrome. That's our first orange. We'll have all of these top loaded, of course, before they're sorted and shipped out. I just can't wait until bring it on like an iPad. Dang it, Darren already did it. He put in the patent for liquid top loaders. We get a cut. 10%. I was thinking about just selling like a piece of my brain for, like you get all my ideas for this much. Yeah, what if we just give you the ideas? We And we'll just take 10% on every idea. Yeah, no, I was gonna sell more than that. I was asked if I wanted Shark Tank, probably 500,000 for 20%. You get a fifth of the brain. All right. I'll do that. We'll see you on Shark Tank, you guys. And then There's you know Jesus they, Sanchez for, out of 499. If you presentation, it would just be a picture of my brain. <laughs> That's an x ray of the brain? Yeah. Taking offers. Go. <laughs> There's Brandon McKay Atomic for the Rays. What, the packs? Yeah, to open them with the rippy things on the top. Yeah, who does that? I feel like that. Who does that? I won't name them. That damage, I, I feel like that them. damages cards, too. You have to be a psychopath. That damages cards, right? The person that I, who does it does it really quick, though. But really? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't damage cards. I feel like it would. I feel like, I feel like corners get ruined that way. Ripping it along the jagged edges. Like, ripping down like that. Yeah. Oh, nice. Connor Capel, 24 out of 25, orange autograph for Jeff Iveson and the Tribe Indians. Nice. We used to play music during our breaks. Just those Wouldn't they, like, mute the video? Yeah. We'd get, like, a million copyright strikes. Yeah. We just have to create original music. Yeah, they have copy. There's Franklin things. Perez to one. We can just use the... Uh, the Alan Walker song, like the most popular one. What about... Uh, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia uses that that like whimsical music. Is that copyright free? I think so. I think they were... They, when they first did like the pilot or they were just doing whatever, they, they need, they need filler music. <laughs> yeah. Funny. So they just find, found like some rights-free music just to put it in, but then it kind of fit the show, so they kept it. You know what song hits is that Game of Thrones theme song. Oh, I'm and sure everyone like, uses it. Wow, that is a song. Do 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 do. One seventy-seven wow. out of two fifty. Travis Swaggerty, that swag for the Pirates. That goes to uh, Tony, who got the Pirates in a spot random. Can you? How come you guys know the guy who produced the whole? 
images for this meet, and he knows the whole season. What? I don't know if it's public. What? If I should say his I name. don't know the person. Wait, who's the name? I think his initial starts with M. Oh, an R? Yeah. Oh, he works on the show now? Yeah. That the company know. that made, made oh, the, oh, the, oh, the graphics. The graphics. If you've ever seen it, and it's totally yeah, different yeah, yeah. this year. I see, I see. And he apparently he knows everything that's going to happen. Wow. In so we're going to kidnap him? and. <laughs> I, I don't want to know. Um, well, uh, our friend, uh, different MR, girl MR. Yeah. She did the uh, posters. For, for Game of Thrones. Yeah, for like I think the first few seasons, all the stuff you see on the bus buses and awesome. billboards and everything, she, like she did she did the design for all of those. Yeah, this he was like in charge of he was the head honcho. I, I didn't cool. realize that. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Wasn't Capel the guy who was in the that bar fight that Clemens' son was in? I, that I don't know. That's some that's some deep trivia there. Connor Capel got in a fight with what Casey Clemens or something? Cody Clemens? Connor Clemens? He's got like four or five sons like that are in baseball. Got a nice uh, Genesis Cabrera, eleven out of fifty. And that Sterling design, Bowman Sterling coming back this year. Folks. That is a good walk-in song, UFC. What happened to one buck breaks? Yeah, that didn't last very long. Went out of business. Yeah, once the once the profits dried up. Drew Waters Atomic. I think Darren means ten buck breaks, but we might revive that someday. Ten buck breaks. But um you know, they pay us too much to do ten dollar breaks. Oh, I thought that was an orange parallel for a second. It's not. Oh, they were together. So Connor Capel and a Clemens. There's Roberto Ramos, another Rocky for Michael Smith. Um, There's Roberto Ramos. So, so this Capel guy, along with one of Roger Clemens's kids, were just out and about, and and they just uh, and they just got in a fight, and they got beat up by bouncers. Um, hockey will be coming back too. I think I think that will will get uh, well. I mean, we have upper deck stuff on the side already, but we'll get we'll be able to get some more once we move into our new store sometime this year. There's Andres Jimenez to want two fifty. Jeff Iveson, yes, Chrome does ship. Only paper base does not ship. Paper doesn't ship. Everything else does. Except super factors. <laughs> right. No yeah, and of course, everyone read the item description where it says no, no super fractors ship, right? All right, there's out of two ninety nine, Jojo Romero speckle for the Phillies, Ricky Buffalo, Buffalo. Whoa, look at that! Oh, Goldschmidt and Goldschmidt on top too. of the stacks. I was gonna be like, what? Gotta bet the Goldschmidt home run prop now. No worries, Jeff. Obviously, for those of you who don't understand jokes, obviously Super Factors will ship. <laughs> someone's going to go around and be like, Jaspi's not selling your Super Factors. Can or you we believe that? They'll be in someone else's chat. What if we sold the Super Factor spot? They'll be like, they'll be like Jaspi's, they, they ain't sending Super Factors. How much I heard it. Joe said it. for a Super Factor spot in the case? No matter what player, you get it. <laughs> oh. That's a new Oh, people would be pissed. Imagine if you... Even if the Blue Jay spot was like a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Well, it would be cheaper, but yeah, people would. But yeah, it. and then all of a sudden, Vlad Guerrero <laughs> Jr. Super Factor came out, but it went to the guy who bought the shoe. No, people would riot. There'd be riots. There'd be there'd be uh, pitchforks and, and torches 
outside Jaspies in an undisclosed location. We're down to Beach, California. It would be cool to do a break where maybe I shouldn't say it online. <laughs> but you do. We like... are on wax. This is on. This is being recorded. Look no, at this, folks. No breakers watching. Goldsmith, Goldsmith, right on top. Um, you sell the one on one spot, then you sell the out of five spot. Yeah, Whoa. Five spot. See now, if we if we did it, yeah, we, the only way to sell the super factor spot if we did it like that. Yeah. That's next level. How would you price that? I don't know. One on one, obviously, the most. Right. But with like the lowest chance of getting it. Yeah. There's Nick Castellanos to four ninety nine. But it's like the number break, kind of the one the one spot. I guess so. Yeah. There's Luis Robert Atomic. But you can still get like eleven out of fifty in the, the number break. What if we did random pack full case bomb. Random pack? <laughs> That'd Maybe be we might work with jumbo. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. That'd be what hundred spots or something. That's true. That's crazy. There's Andrew uh, Neisner. I'm assuming the K is silent. 418 out of 499. For the Redbirds, Josh Pruse has the Cardinals. Got the Cardinals in a spot random. I think it's Knizzer. Could be Knizzer. I've never heard his name being spoken, so. It'd be cool to have uh, every player queued up and we click it and like the announcer of their home team right. speaks. Well, we should get we should get media guides from all these teams. They have yeah, all the pronunciations sure. there. Victor Mesa Jr. Nice, That's pretty cool. He's not as highly touted as Victor Victor, but I think Baseball America still has both the Mesa brothers for the Marlins as like top thirty players. I think Victor Victor is like top three or something like that in the Marlins organization, if not the top. And he's like in the twenties or something like that according to Baseball America. I don't like America. their new logo. You don't like their new logo? I think it's sharp. What does everyone think about the Miami Marlins new logo? I like the Florida Marlins logo, kind of. Oh, the old F? Yeah. With the Marlins? With the I, I do like that, top. yeah. I just wish they'd switch back to Florida. I think it's a better name. Yeah, just take over the state. How about Miami and Tampa Bay? <clears throat> just combine those two teams together? Yeah. There's Austin Beck. Remove Tampa Bay to, to 125. Remove Tampa Miami. Bay would destroy the NL East. If they were if they were in Montreal, oh, but they would say in the AL. I guess they would have to. Yeah, AL East. Or is Montreal in the East? They were in the NL East. Yeah. You'd switch them to. The, or keep them in the AL East. Yeah. Or s move Miami. Maybe. They just bought that new stadium though. Out of one fifty. Well, I mean, they moved Houston. From the NL to the AL, yeah, they like did. they, they, they just screwed they, the Angels. They disrespected, disrespected them, right? Screwed the Angels. They used to be just a. Well, they used to be garbage. They used to be a wide open door. You just go in and sweep them. Yeah. <laughs> so it was good at first. I remember Astro tickets were the cheapest to get. Right. But now they're really good. So. Well, yeah, they got a whole new front office, whole new ownership, I think. Yeah. And then they just sold off everybody. Tanked for like four years, lost 105 games every year. But they didn't year. do it like Miami, where they actually traded good players away. Like Yelich. Well, no, I mean, that the Yelich trade will probably go down. Miami had Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton. Still. And JT Real Muto. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. Would be a play. That's a playoff, like a potential playoff team. They just they just want to make money. Well, that's what that's what Houston did. Yeah. And that's what the Cubs did. Like the amount of money you save doing that. Yeah. And then they still sell the same amount of tickets. And then, and then once you get all these like hot prospects, you're still saving money because you're not paying them for another like five or six right. years yeah. while they're in arbitration. And then they can start worrying about it's like okay, now we can start paying these like whoever. But then they'll be like the A's and they'll trade them once they get good. So it's just like a cycle. Well, see, that's that's if their business model says, hey, we want to do it like the A's. Yeah. Then then the city of Miami screwed. Yeah. Like they they, you know, because it'll just be that. But yeah, that Yelich trade because they got who did they get? You guys, you guys remember who was in that Yelich trade to the Brewers? I know we got some Wisconsin folks here, some Midwest folks here that might be able to remember yeah, that. Nobody. It was like nobodies. 
Corey Nebel or something? I think I think he goes by Knebel. Knebel? Yeah. Uh, there's Nick Nider for the Marlins. Atomic. I think it was like Lewis Brinson. It was someone who's like batting 100 right now. So Brewers like lo unloaded like Lewis Brinson, who maybe at the time was like a top 10 organizational prospect, but Lewis Brinson and like some other like like in a bag of baseballs or something like that. Yeah, and and the Brewers got an MVP <laughs> like like that year. They got an MVP. It's just so crazy because he doesn't look like a power hitter. He doesn't. So, and in person, he was really skinny too. He was when we saw him in person. There you go. Jonathan Martin's got it. Brinson and Nissan Diaz. All right, a bag of baseballs. There's Jake Bowers. Crushed a home run last night for the Indians, but this is still Rays edition to four ninety nine. That'll be for Parker Wilson, who got the Rays straight up. So if if imagine if Christian Yelich wins another MVP, and that's got to go down as one of the worst trades in history, yeah, in baseball bad. history, it'd be pretty bad. But yeah, no, when we saw we we met Christian Yelich at the Topps Industry Conference in Arizona, folks, he doesn't look yeah he's he's not Zeman. much taller than he's probably about as tall as you. Yeah, he looks like and, Pete Davidson. You know, yeah, he looks like Pete Davidson. So does he have a shot at Ariana Grande then? I think he has a better shot than. Right. Although Pete Davidson, he's with Kate Beckinsale. So I don't know. Stop. What's Kate Beckinsale doing with Pete Davidson? Pete Davidson must have like and a. Kate Beckinsale has a daughter, same age as Pete Davidson. Yeah, yeah I mean, what, he... what? Pete Davidson is a sorcerer. That's what he is. He's just well, using sorcery. It's not not safe for work. What what he's got? I guess. Well, yeah, probably yeah. Been using a lot of Frank Thomas's products. Yeah. 33 out of 50, Anthony K. Gold, Chrome for the Mets, Dare McKenzie. And he's funny, I guess. He must, he must be. He must be hella funny if he's yeah. landing Ariana Grande, and then replacing her with you know, Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. That's an upgrade in my mind. What Kate Beckinsale? Yeah. She's she's you know a more mature lady, classier. Yeah. But without all the drama. Pete Davidson. Right, exactly. She's British too, right? Yeah, I think so. I feel like, I feel like uh, the British accent will age well. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. Like, that won't get old for Americans. Yeah. I think Brandon Lowe hit a dinger last night too. No, Yelich, so, sorry, going back to Yelich, Yelich doesn't look like a power hitter, you're right. Um... I've been listening to the Buster Only podcast, Baseball Tonight podcast, and and he was saying he he remembers when he interviewed Yelich when he was still a Marlin like four or five years ago, and they were they were joking. Buster Only was joking with Yelich about, hey, I think someday you'll hit twenty home runs, <laughs> and like, and Yelich kind of laughed at him and was like, I don't think so. Like I'm more of a, you know, Contact. doubles guy. Yeah, I'm like a I'm like that guy, not not a power guy. I had a one fifty atomic. I pulled so many Yelich cards in 2013. He was just all over. Now they're worth a lot. He was always like a fantastic... Well, that's what the Dodgers are hoping Verdugo will be. Yeah. It's like similar makeup. You know, good good, Last good minute. contact hitter, good yeah. like eye at the plate. I mean, I guess technically that's what you want, right? You want hitters to be able to hit first, not strike out too much. Joey Gallo. Right, you're right. And then develop power later. Like you want pitchers to have command first, and then they could develop, you know, some velocity later. Yeah, I'll probably be in the home run derby this year. That'd be cool. See so Yel Yelich in the home run derby. But yeah, I mean, I don't think Yelich was ever projected. I think everyone projected Yelich to be a great player. But power and an MVP. I don't think so. Could be PEDs. I don't know. He looks small bigger, for PEDs. Yeah. yeah. He's, he still looks skinny. Yeah, I, I mean, next level PEDs where it makes you look smaller. Yeah, just makes just all that lean muscle. Yeah, fast twitch muscle, quick bat through the zone. There's Ronaldo Hernandez for the Rays, another Ray. 
I'd take steroids if I had to fight Mike Tyson. If that ever went through. Someone mentioned that the other day. Someone mentioned like, and I was like, I was like, someone was like, oh yeah, we'd all be knocked out by Mike Tyson even now. I was like, oh, I don't know. Talk to Nick Jaspi, Monday nights. He'll tell you. The longer it goes, the better it gets for me. (laughs) He'll tell you that that Nick Jaspi thinks he can knock out Mike Tyson. I'm not saying I wake up and knock him out. I said train train for a year with the best boxing trainer. Sure. We got that one guy in L.A. who worked with Pacquiao for a while, right? Yeah, and who's the uh, the famous boxing promoter? Something King. Don King. Yeah, he's still around. He'll do it. I get him. Wait, no, is he still is he still with us? Yeah, he is. Okay. I think he was at the White House the other day. Don King was at the White House. What is he doing there? Big fan. Is he really? (laughs) Yeah. That doesn't seem like that would jive. (laughs) Yeah. Like when I remember that Jackie Robinson was a Republican, and I was like, all right. It was kind of different back then, but out of twenty-five, Nick Senzel, Orange Shimmer for the Red Legs. That's for Big Boys 007. Oh, Jonathan Martin was saying Monty Harrison was involved in that yellow trade too. So another bag of baseballs. Ladies and gentlemen, worst worst baseball trades. What do you think is the worst baseball trade in history? Like, I guess after Babe Ruth. That's too easy. I can think of football, not baseball. There's not a lot of trades, I feel like. No, I feel like... Like Blockbuster. No, I mean, I guess I guess I think only the people... That's why I'm asking everybody, because it's only their, like, their specific teams where they go, oh, man, that could have been a first baseman for the next 10 years, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Dodgers traded uh, Pedro Martinez for Delino DeShield Sr. Oh, yeah, that's a bad one. The Red and, Sox. Yeah, uh, no, to the Expos. At the oh time. yeah, that's right, Expos. And so they got to Shield. They need a second baseman, and they thought. And we had uh, Ramon Martinez, Pedro's oh, brother. Bonds. And so Ramon Martinez had the same kind of lanky sort of build, but Pedro was even smaller and thinner. And they just thought he's never going to make. Right. He's never going to pitch like 200 innings a season and pitch for 15 years, which is exactly what he did for like yeah. the next 15 years. Was Bonds a trade? To the Pittsburgh? Giants? I don't remember that. I don't remember that being a trade. I thought he might have been. I thought that was a free agent thing. I, yeah, I forgot the White Sox traded Sammy Sosa, too. Oh, White Sox traded Sosa to the Cubs? Yeah. Wow. Favorite player. Oh, wow. Heath, Heathcliff Slocum for Derek Lowe and Jason Veritek. Ooh, Veritek wow. good Red Sox. Derek Lowe had some yeah. solid seasons as a closer yeah. and a starter. Remember, and, Te- and Tech was a great catcher. Yeah, for... remember Veritek beat up Aaron, made him bleed? Oh, yeah. That was the best baseball fight. Corbin Burns. Other than Nolan Ryan. That was pretty good, too. Corbin Burns for uh, yeah. the Brew Crew. That's Brian O with the Brewers. Nowadays, they don't, they don't fight at all. No one fights. They just gather together. Oh man, hockey! Ovechkin knocked out this nineteen-year-old. I saw. I finally that saw the video of that. Nasty. That kid was. That he kid was asked for on, it. Yeah. Totally asked for it. But all the all the um, coaches were trashing him, trashing Ovechkin. Why? Because he knocked him out. Fighting's part of the game. Sorry, that kid like took the wrong guy to fight. And I think it's like the first time ever two Russians have like fought forever. Like, wow. Two Russian-born players. Vladimir Putin's not happy. Vlad is not happy. V. Putin, not happy. Oh, Jeff Bagwell. Remember the Jeff Bagwell trade? Oh, yeah. Red Sox to, uh, I think it was Red Sox, right? Red Sox to the Astros. And then the the 19-year-old, post, his brother, posted on Instagram, like, yeah, we're coming for you. So he's going to go for a veg game? Yeah, like, like mob, national Russian, Russian hero? Type. Oh, so that's why this 19-year-old kid thought he was protected? Like, yeah. he could be like, yeah. anything can happen to me. I have Russian mob behind me. Yeah. But Ovechkin's got Putin behind him. Yeah, Putin loves Ovechkin. Ovechkin's like what the is most this? famous Russian like, athlete. It's like KGB versus Russian mafia. Classic. It's like the old days. Oh, it was the Rangers. Oh, trade. he was on the Rangers originally. The Sox traded for him. There's Ryan Villad, Atomic. Oh, 
another Dodgers trade that wasn't as bad was Dodgers traded uh, Paul Canerco to the Reds for Jeff Shaw, closer. Jeff Shaw ended up clo closing for the Dodgers for like a few years and gave him like 35, 40 saves a season. But then Paul Canerco went on to hit 500 home runs or something like that, 450 home runs. For oh, the, the, for, the Sox, for the Reds yeah. and the White Sox. Actually, he wasn't that great for the Reds. Wasn't Jim Tomey a trade, too? Jim Tomey's kind of bounced around a, a while. Yeah. But he just just he grinded out like 600 home runs, yeah. Remember Frank Thomas Blue Jay? Commercial? You know what? I always forget about that. Noah Syndergaard was a Blue Jay. Yeah, he was. And they traded for R.A. Dickey, yeah. I think Travis Darno was in that same trade. Was Darno in the same trade? Yeah. I don't know if Darno's hasn't really panned out he yet, really, right? But he was a really top prospect. But yeah, Syndergaard was... But R.A. Dickey was coming off his Cy Young year. He had it. And he was like 36. But why, like... That doesn't make they sense. They just wanted to compete now, I guess. Oh. They had a really good team. Oh, I see, I see. They had, like, Bautista... And Syndergaard wasn't going to come up Cronos for, like, another like, couple of years? Yeah, I think he was, like, pretty young. John Tam is saying, I want to say Harold Baines went to the Rangers for Sosa. Interesting. That's an interesting trade. Some be network guy? Yeah. I do not remember the, the Lamar Hoyt for Ozzy Guillen trade, though. That I don't remember. That Was that really a trade? Dar Darren Porter? In 1991, Kurt Schilling, Steve Finley, and Pete Harnish for Glenn Davis. Like Astros Glenn Davis? Big baby Glenn Davis. Big baby Glenn Davis. <laughs> why would you send? Why would you trade a center for baseball players? <laughs> like a like kind of a overweight power forward for. <laughs> Big baby, that's a that's one of the best nicknames in all of yeah. sports history. My dad said most famous jersey of all time is Babe Ruth, number three. Most famous. I said, just in all professional sports. Yeah, in history. No, it's Jordan. 23. I said Jordan twenty three, but he said because Jordan had multiple numbers, it ruins it. Because remember, Jordan had forty five. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of just recognizable numbers, like I'm That's not good I mean. with jersey numbers, right? Yeah. Like I, it, I, people always go, oh, they always think of oh twenty four. I think of this and blah, blah blah. I think of that. I'm pretty good with jersey, no. but yeah. So I'm not like jersey think, number guy, but if there's one I will know forever would be like Jordan 23. And besides Kobe's yeah. numbers, but like Jordan 23. Yeah, like Just that's and the, nationally, the globally, have made it right? Too. But Babe Ruth, I guess number three is Babe Ruth had it. If Babe Ruth around, was around now and had yeah. a sneaker yeah. line, well, that might be different. Yeah. I guess most famous baseball jersey number probably. Fine. I can go with that. Mickey Mantle's number seven. That's pretty famous. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> Jeter, two. Oh, yeah, Jeter, number two. Babe Ruth, three. All Yankees. Yeah. <clears throat> it's because they don't wear their last names. So you have to know their numbers. you have to know their numbers, right? That's why I always think it's funny when Yankees fans wear the jerseys with the last name on it. It's like, it's, it looks weird, jersey. yeah. It yeah. actually looks weird. Yeah. Jackie Robinson, 42. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I bet that... Well, it's just I the think, other day. <laughs> I think that's more famous than Babe Ruth, though. You think that's more famous than Babe Ruth? Just because they do Jackie Robinson Day. Yeah, they do make... It's, it's, a big th it's a big thing. What about Gretzky 99? That's a good one. That's top five. 192 out of 499. There's Matt Mercer for the Diamondbacks. Gretzky trade was pretty bad, too. The Gretzky trade was pretty bad. <laughs> Because they didn't like, they didn't even want to pay him or something. It's all, yeah, it comes down to money. Yeah. But I don't know. They're a small market, I bet. At some point, you just, you kind of have to, like, whether are they, they going to trade Connor McDavid? Yeah. You know, they're like, sorry, yeah. we're Edmonton, we're in Edmonton, we're a small market team, we can't play Connor McDavid. Yeah. I mean, if you see a generational player like that, you kind of have to be like. And I think Gretzky wanted to stay there too. He didn't want to go to LA. Really? I, I hear their kids are brats, Jason. Uh, Paulina Gretzky's married to Dustin Johnson, the golfer. Oh, is he really? Yeah. I hear like some some of the kids are like just absolute. She's really just spoiled brats. Very good looking though. Yeah, I don't think you ever wanted to. I mean, she's very good looking. Yeah, the Gretzky's daughters. Paulina, yeah, she's. 
Yeah, she's pretty easy on the eyes. She's with Dustin Johnson. But yeah, I can't remember that. He was in a Bowman, right? There's a uh, Sandro Fabian to 249 for the Giants. Yeah, they didn't want to pay him. They and they money. just want a cup too. Yeah, they have no money to pay him. But you gotta, you gotta dig up some money for, for that. Oh, uh, what was that? What was the trade that the uh, the Cowboys and Vikings did? The Thurman Thomas or, or Herschel Walker? The Herschel Walker trade, like Walker. that was like a legendary they got, bad trade. They got like Troy Aikman yeah, and they got Emmett Smith, I think. That was the only good Jerry Jones. Although, Amari Cooper, that's looking bad for the Raiders <laughs> now. Now he's really good. Oh, yeah. Well, then, then he, yeah, go ahead, Jerry Jones. Pay Amari Cooper. See how that works yeah. out for you. And then pay Dak Prescott. And Ezekiel Elliott. And Ezekiel Elliott. Um, 13 out of 25, Willie Adams for the Rays. And Jalen Smith and Byron Jones. Right. And Leighton Van Der Esch. Yeah. Will Smith, Dodgers catching prospect. I think he was up for a cup of coffee last year, folks, and they definitely played Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as his walk-up music. I think the Eagles might go 16-0. The Eagle, you think the Eagles are going to go 16-0? I think their over-under Vegas should be 15. I haven't looked at the Raiders' schedule yet, but I've been hearing everywhere that it's, well, like, it's awfully hard. Well, it's because they the Chiefs and Chargers. But I think, that, but I think they, games. like, tra- they don't they, didn't they send him to London and... Well, yeah, because, they've got like a weird schedule where they get they play the Chiefs and they play then they go to London or come back and play I the heard Chiefs. Football strength strength of schedule is most overrated. Cole Reagan going it into is. the season because football is so much turnover every year. Yeah, injury just changes Injuries and yeah, all that. Well, I sent you that article last year where yeah, like where problem. everyone does yeah. strength of schedule kind of wrong. They just go by just W's and L's yeah. when they should just base it more off of points for and points against, and that's a better indicator of strength, real strength of schedule. Victor Victor Mesa to 299. Speckle, non-auto, but still nice. Marlins, Jeremy Tillman. Raiders will be fine, though. I think they'll be okay. The Eagles have the fourth easiest of the like, It doesn't seem that easy. Yeah. Patriots have the easiest, of course. Patriots definitely have the easiest schedule. And then Adam Gase says he wants to dethrone it's the Patriots. Casey Mize, 250. Because he coaches the Jets now. It's like, dude, you coached the Dolphins. You didn't yeah. dethrone the Patriots. He's going to dethrone them with uh, Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, and Sam Darnold. And Sam Darnold. And Quincy Inunua. All right, and, folks, uh, we have one, two, three, yeah, four, so five, move. six, seven, eight Marks autographs. Eight, nine, Gore. ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> We're looking for four more autographs. Eagles legend Frank Gore. <laughs> Josh Proust saying Eagles won't, of, won't win in Green Bay. Uh, Eagles might might embarrass Green Bay so much that the fans will have to sell the team. Wow. You that's heard on, you heard it here first, that's folks. That's on Thursday Night Football. That too, is a spicy take. Nick Jaspi, quote, Eagles will embarrass Green Bay so much that the fans will have to sell the team. Because the fans own the team. Yeah. Right, exactly. I get it. I get it. I see you. Josh Hader, 250. Josh Hader's got some good show hair right there. That's some good... That's hair for the show right there. Show hair. (laughs) Josh Bruce says even Philly fans here are saying 11 games. Uh, 11, you might as well pencil it in now. There's Evan White Atomic. Nate Sudfeld, he'll be good too. Yeah. Stud yeah, I want one. <laughs> Eagles should just drop Kyler Murray. And just have another backup. I don't know, just like have him play running back. back. Yeah. Yeah, he's minus two. Sproles can do it. One pick. There's Zanis Medina, four ninety nine. Bet like a two thousand and win like. Like twenty cents. Yeah, two dollars and twenty cents. It's nothing. Yeah. Slide. So these are the last stacks remaining right here. Like so sure. That, that, sure. that, and this one right here. <laughs> That's for the Phillies. That'd be a bet like Floyd Mayweather does. And then he brags about it on his Instagram. <laughs> then he bets someone minus 2,000 and yeah. he won. So he bets a million dollars. He bets a million and, and gets like 20,000 back or whatever. Right. And be like, you know, I'm the GOAT at boxing. I'm the GOAT at sports betting. 
Over under on when uh, how many years before yeah, that one Floyd goes bankrupt. Bet five million on oh, he's Matt already bankrupt. Had a nice straight win or when he was on fire that year. Oh yeah, and yeah. Then he won fifteen million. I was like, damn. Damn. Floyd Mayweather didn't he fight that Japanese kickboxer? In Japan, right? Yeah, he got like hundred million dollars yeah. for so it. Like, Jesus, like, really? And it wasn't like televised. Yeah. Nah, that's that's insane. Good. It was just wild. It's just so amazing how people will pay that much money to just have it in the ring. Yeah, like Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. He got the well, Mike Trout beat it, but at the nice time, Brady the Singer speckled a two ninety nine for the Royals. That's gonna go to John Anderson. Rex says that the, that he thinks that Tops miscut the cards and then said, "Oh, this is the new design." <laughs> I like him. It's not you can bad. see on the back they're not miscut. Yeah, Rex, see? We cut it just fine. No conspiracy. Craig theory. says that that fight was a joke. The Japan fight with Floyd? <laughs> I never even I didn't saw even, it. I didn't even re realize yeah, that happened. Yeah, yeah, it was like 3 a.m. here. Yeah. Where, where, when was it? Like recently? A couple months ago. I think oh. The winter. Who won? <laughs> Floyd won Mayweather, I think. He, but he's like, a, he, this guy was oh. huge in Japan. But he, I think he got like an ass knocked out in like 10 seconds. All right, so we should have these three. Each stack should have an autograph left. I think this is, we had nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, and that's our break, ladies and gentlemen. We were is making Canelo Alvarez good. fighting Cinco de Mayo? Yeah. Is he? Him He's and GGG. 50 out of 125 at Dustin May. That was a pretty good fight, but then... Wait, is that, is that like the third fight now? The second. Those? They oh, called second. the first one a draw, and everyone was really mad. Oh, I see. It was kind of rigged so they could do the rematch, I think. Money grab. Yeah. That's what I thought the first Manny Pacquiao Mayweather fight would be. I bet, like, my whole paycheck on the draw. Because I thought it'd be... They Just a money grab, and then yeah, they do, then they do thing two. One. But I was, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's the schedule in the chat, folks. Coming up right after this is another one of these. Bowman Hobby uh, number five, which is already full. Right after that will be Bowman Jumbo number five. Then right after that will be Status Basketball. Then after that we should be at the last hour of the broadcast. Is anything else full, boys and girls? I don't think someone would have said if something sold out. But we, we technically do have, well, we do have time for another Hobby or another Jumbo. So whatever fills first, hobby or jumbo, we can do another one of those tonight. If anything else fills up, uh, then that might push the next hobby or jumbo to the next day. But I don't think anything else is in danger of filling up. There's Forrest Whitley, Atomic. So start looking at jazbeescasebreaks.com. This break will be over before you know it. And start thinking about if you want to do another jumbo, if you want to do another hobby, something else. My over-under is coming. We're at 43. I said at 54. He said at 54. So Nick okay. Sportsbook is about to get hit some one way or another. There's Keston Hiuda to 150. Are the Blue Jays left? I can put the Blue Jays in a spot random if nobody wants them. Jumbo 6 is at number 2. What teams are left, Mr. Samuelson? So Jumbo 5, I, I sold the Blue Jays in a spot random. Hobby six is at one. Whoa. Yeah, I'll do whatever one doesn't break two o'clock. Next year we should just do a 10 case pick your team and then just do all of them. We should be done with it. Yeah. On the first day. I'll do five, you do five. There's Victor, Victor Mesa. Nice. 46 out of 499. I hit both of them. Nice. That goes to Jeremy Tillman with the Marlins. 
Was Victor Mesa Jr. in this one? Or was that the Jumbo case? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> it all blurs in now. Nice Victor, Victor Mesa. Great break so far. Some solid stuff. So Pirates and Cardinals for Jumbo 6. Oh, those are cheap. And just Royals for us. So all the big teams are gone in both of those breaks? Well, mm -hmm. sell out one of those, folks. First to fill, first to break, and that'll be the last break of the night. We're already full as soon as one of those sell out. Then the other one will be breaking tomorrow with, uh, with Nick. Nick will pop in a little early to finish that off. Tomorrow, the other baseball break, and then we then I should be in by then, and we'll rock and roll with some flawless. So someone go and make a make a decision, take a position on jumbo or take a position on hobby, and make it happen. Personally, I would prefer jumbo. <laughs> but at the end of the night, it's a little bit a little bit easier, a little more entertaining at the end. Three autos a box, but either one, whatever. First to fill, first to break. We got Cal Quantrill to 499 for the Padres. We've got Orange Andrew Neisner, Kneiser, Kneiser, 21 out of 25 for the Cardinals. And there's Ryan Costello, 70 out of 150. That'll be for the Twins. Christian Piper with the Twins. Almost there, folks. Just one more autograph to go. This is Pick Your Team 4. Schedule is in the chat. Hobby 5 coming up right after this. And we're still trying to figure out what our last break of the night is going to be. <laughs> Ryan will be excited when Bowman's over with. Well, we're getting there. We're moving through a lot of cases. Out of 150... Andrew Kneiser, Kneisner. In cases at three, well, plus a spot random, right? A spot random has to go as well for encased football. If that encased, pick your team and the spot random fill up before the Bowman breaks, then those Bowman breaks will be pushed till tomorrow. So it's all up to you, the 48 people that are watching right now. Whatever we end the night with is all in your hands. So someone someone take control. Take control of the train, the Big Hit Express, and lead us into the last break of the night. And Hobby 6 sold out. Okay, so that's our last break of the night, folks. Thank you. So there you go. We are done for the night, folks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, see you later. There's Ronaldo Hernandez to 499. So right now we're just wrapping up Hobby Pick Your Team 4. Ho or Hobby Pick Your Team 4, yeah, right. And then Hobby Pick Your Team 5 directly after this, after the recap video. Then uh, Spot Random, and then uh, for Bowman, Jumbo 5. Then we'll do Jumbo 5. Then we'll do a quick status basketball break as a palate cleanser. Then we'll end the night with Hobby 6. Thanks, everybody. So we are already done for the night. Everything's full.
Now, it doesn't mean that you guys have to leave. Feel free to hang out, see what monsters we pull out of the, uh, the other Bowman products. We haven't seen a Super Fractor yet, so that's something to keep an eye out for. You can witness a Super Fractor live. Gavin Lux to 299. You can hang out with me, talk baseball, talk sports. And you can get your uh, pre order your flawless teams, ladies and gentlemen. Because flawless is dropping tomorrow, you can pre order those now. Our last autograph. <coughs> Looking for one more, uno más. And there it is. It's Miguel Amaya for EA and the Cubbies. There you go, Eric, right at the very end of hobby number four, 2019 Bowman Baseball. Nice. We see a lot of Keegan Thompsons, but not a lot of those Amayas. So there you go, man. Thanks for getting in. Let's see if there's any other parallels we can see to close out this break. We'll do a recap video. As well, if you're just joining us and you're in this break, we're going to be doing an R cap. There's Nico Herner to 150 blue paper for the Cubbies for EA. There's Jason Groom. Goes by J Groom now. There's Nate Person to 250, Purple Chrome for the Blue Jays. And the last bit here. There's Vlad Guerrero on the top 100. And that is that, my friends. Thank you very much, everybody. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was a 12-box hobby. Pick your team number four, 2019 Bowman Baseball. We'll see you for the next one.